Uh, okay, so I'll try to do it really quick. Uh, just describing chronological order, the first steps of the mesoscale operational uh, uh, modeling in the Israel and actually in the Air Force, which was the first one to do it. Um, and I do it chronologically. I started my meteorological career in 1983, and uh, I happened to find myself as a junior forecaster to do a long weekend shift with uh, Pinchas Alper. And uh, Pinchas was just uh, fresh from Harvard, and he was very enthusiastic uh, about modeling, and he actually planted this idea into my head. Uh, after I became a research uh, officer, uh, I tried to discuss this issue with the, the, the commander of the unit, Richard Abramsky, and uh, actually I received a, not a very favorable answer. In Richard's view, there are too many obstacles to do this or to start this uh, step, uh, like uh, no experience in Israel, no uh, computing, no funding. And the co when our, we are talking about computing, we're talking about Cray computers, no, or something similar, which is uh, uh, many million dollars computers. Uh, I thought about it and tried to argue every each of these points, and uh, uh, one of them. One of the ideas was, why don't we use an existing model, which will save, save us a lot of time, and uh, uh, we don't have to have specific experience in modeling. And about uh, uh, the problem of the computing and, and funding, uh, I had a feeling that computers are going to uh, becoming uh, uh, cheaper and faster. And I told him, when we will be ready with modeling, probably computers will catch up and we'll be able to uh, provide computers. And after many uh, discussions with him in 1985, my proposition was accepted to my surprise by the meteorological uh, unit. Uh, some of the people here maybe remember this meeting where this proposition uh, was accepted. Uh, 1986 to 87 was a period of intense study. I, will, I, I got this, the job of doing of providing this model, so the first thing I did is to sit and study numerical weather prediction and uh, uh, do use uh, uh, the best of my time, use, uh, learn the physics, the numerics, the computing, and uh, also looking for partner, which was a very important mission. And uh, uh, my first visit to the United States, my first personal visit to the United States was to, to all these places, where I found out that uh, we have the, the best help we can get from NCAR, and that's when I came back and told Pinchas that I chose uh, uh, the MM4. Uh, 1998, I went back to NCAR, and this time, in order to really run the, the MM4, to make all the adaptations, all the configurations, and to run it over Israel, and it was the first run of MM4 over Israel ever to be done, uh, the first that started. After I finished it, I just took all the runs, all the data, and put it on a magnetic tape and came back to Israel. And we started looking for a computer. So Cray was out of the question, uh, too expensive, and also a export license probably impossible to, to, to reach. And then we found out there is a solution called the convex computer, which is a vector computer, a new idea of uh, calculating the whole vector in one step in one day, computing step, and we were, we were really excited. Instead of 20 million, you know, just put 1 million, and you have a computer, and you can run a mesoscale model. And with the help of the convex people, we made the, the first operational run. We were taking the data from the uh, Israeli Meteorological Service on my car, right, driving to the place where convex was installed, running it during the night, staying there, during the night with the computer, taking the results, going back to, to the back to the IMS, plotting the results, taking the results in the morning, giving them to Richard, Richard going with them to the Air Force chief and telling him, look, this is operational forecast, it's still valid for today. And the uh, Air Force chief was excited and said, I want this. I want one of this. Uh, so that's how officially became a, a project called Hamutal. That's how the Air Force uh, called it. Uh, 
1990, everything was ready. We had a team. And we decided that Hamutal will be not only modeling, but also a computerizing all data processing in the unit observations, uh, forecasts, you know, everything can, that can be done by computing and not manually, we want to put it in. We received the $1 million budget and a schedule of, uh, to finish this in one year and started doing the paperwork that's connected to this project but uh, received computers and January 1991, we had a war. The Gulf War, and uh, writing paperwork is not something you're doing when you have a war, so you should uh, have a mesoscale model operational to, to help you run this war. So uh, uh, my commander at that time came and told me, I want this model running as fast as possible, and in one week it ran. We didn't go to sleep for, for a week, but it, it ran. Uh, so, actually, January 91 was the beginning of the operational MM4 runs in Israel. It was run twice a day for 48 hours with one hour resolution and it was 80 kilometer resolution. We used the Bracknell model, the British Met Office uh, model. Uh, and another point, uh, just uh, from interest, it, we, f we finished by using 500k dollars out of the million that we had, which is project that used less than we had. I, I don't know if we have many examples of this. Uh, later I became a, actually the main user of this model when I became the head of the meteorological unit in 1993. And uh, just uh, some improvements were done during this time, like going to a better resolution, 40 kilometer resolution, like changing to MM5, and uh, just to make a small calculation, we had something like 5,000 operational mesoscale forecasts during this time. Each one of them was used, was used to provide Air Force uh, the best uh, meteorological information we could provide. Thank you.